Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Science Of, the show where I take a look at the science behind your favourite game shows and more. Today, we're diving into a warp pipe to take a look at some more of the science behind those Super Mario Brothers. With the Super Mario Bros movie now released and officially having the best opening weekend for any animated movie, I think it's about time we took a look at one of Mario's most important and often overlooked abilities, his brick breaking Goomba grinding punch. Throughout the Mario franchise, Mario has been using his fists to break every block of bricks he encounters on his run through the Mushroom Kingdom. Back on the original 8-bit game on the Nintendo Entertainment System, everyone thought that our heroic plumber was breaking blocks with his head, but no. Those 8 pixels just to the right of his hat clearly show that Mario has been punching bricks into oblivion for over 7 generations of home console. And it's a good thing too. If Mario headbutted as many bricks as he goes through in the main franchise, he'd be struggling with a lot of concussions. But even Mario's brick punching obsession comes with a few questions. First of all, how strong is Mario? Because he's got a few things working against him. For one, he's working against gravity, putting the energy into his jump and lifting his arm to punch a brick above his head. That's definitely going to limit the amount of energy that Mario can put into any punch. But another thing is that Mario is wearing padded gloves, which will definitely take a lot of the impact of his punch. And whilst it might protect him from bruising his knuckles, it's definitely going to make it harder for him to bust down walls, because the thick fabric will absorb a fair amount of the force. Now of course, if Mario was a bit smarter, then he would have stood on top of the bricks and punched straight down, although I do imagine that would have been a bit tricky to animate on the old 8-bit consoles. However, even when they brought this into existence in games like Super Mario World and Super Mario Land 2, they didn't let Mario punch straight down. Instead, what they did was they turned him into a little drill, making him spin and that would break the blocks beneath him. Okay, so we know that Mario's not got everything going his way. But in order to figure out just how much force Mario's punch is going to need to pack, we first need to know exactly how much brick Mario is having to force his fist through. Thankfully, this is pretty easy. It's not like Nintendo's ever been shy about the number of pixels it uses. The brick seen in the original Super Mario Bros for the NES features 6 full bricks. We can multiply this by 4 to get 24 bricks on all sides, plus 1 extra brick to fill the space in at the top and the bottom, making for a total of 26 bricks per block. In order to get the weight of this big old block, we first need to find the average size of a brick. But unfortunately, brick sizes aren't standard because nothing can ever be easy here on the science of. But to get through this absolutely thrilling brick science as quickly as possible, I'll cut it down. Here's what you need to know. Bricks in different countries have different standards in terms of their size, and to make Mario's punch count the most, we need the biggest surface area. In the UK, bricks need to be 102.5mm wide by 215mm long by 65mm deep. In the US, this is different, being 92mm wide by 203mm long by 57mm. Let's go with the good old British brick. If we have a near perfect cube of 4 bricks deep and 2 bricks wide, that would give each side of the brick an area of 0.118m squared. Multiply this again by another length of 0.43m and we get a volume for our Mushroom Kingdom brick block of 5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. Now around 90% of bricks in the UK are made out of clay. And the nice thing is we have a pretty standard weight to go with our standard size. So we can pretty easily work out just how heavy each of these brick blocks will be. Each brick will weigh an average of 2.75 kilograms, or around the same weight as a 7 pack of soda. But did you know? A ton of those bricks that you break throughout the Super Mario Bros used to be helpless toads, the mushroom people of the Mushroom Kingdom. In the Super Mario Bros manual, there's a quote which states, The quiet and peace-loving mushroom people were turned into mere stones, bricks, and even field horsehair plants. And whilst this might suggest that all of the brick blocks broken throughout the games are toads, this is debunked by a later section of the manual which states, If you come across mushrooms who have been turned into bricks or made invisible, they will reward you by giving you a power boost. This means that this block which gets you a mushroom in World 1-1, that's a toad. But this block right next to it, which you can break with no questions asked, only bricks and mortar. Okay, so now we know just what kind of bricks we're dealing with. Let's figure out just how strong Mario's punch needs to be to break these brick blocks. In order to calculate the force required, we first need to understand how it's being applied to the bricks. You see, all materials have three main ways that forces can act upon them. We call these forces stresses, because they put stress on the material. 
there's compressive stress, which is pushing materials together, then there's tension stress, pulling them apart, and finally there's shear stress, which is sliding materials across each other in different directions. Different materials deal with each kind of stress in a different way. For example, carbon fibre is commonly considered an incredibly strong material. It's remarkably strong when put under tension forces, but it's also almost useless when put against compressive forces, as it is extremely brittle. When we look at bricks, we find that they're strong when put under compressive force, and it's a good thing too, otherwise all buildings would simply fall down under their own weight. But bricks are very weak under a tension force, so you can probably pull a brick apart very easily if you tried. But if you want to squash a brick, especially an English clay brick, you're going to need a lot of force. This is why a lot of concrete structures, and most buildings, have some kind of rebar support structure below the bricks. Now when it comes to the force that Mario is putting on those bricks, he's punching them, causing the bricks to compress, and therefore we need to find the compressive force of the bricks. Your average household brick will have a compressive strength of around 30 newtons per millimetre squared. But the important factor for punching through these bricks isn't the size of the wall, it is in fact the size of the fist. And your average fist has a measurement of 70 by 30 millimetres, meaning that it has a surface area of around 2100 millimetres squared. And this means that your fist would need to exert around 63,000 newtons of force. Okay, so Mario is successfully breaking those bricks every single time. We know that he's punching in the region of 63,000 newtons of force. But how close can a human get to that many newtons? Well, according to a study that looked into the punching strength of Frank Bruno, World Boxing Council heavyweight champion, it was found that he could produce punches with 6,316 newtons of force, enough to accelerate an opponent's head to 53 times the force of gravity. Whilst this is an impressive amount of force, it's no way near enough to break the 63 kilonewtons of force required to punch through our brick block. But from real world experience, we know that it's not impossible to punch your way through multiple layers of concrete or brick. It's a pretty common show of strength. But there's a difference between our calculations and these feats of strength. But comparing Mario to a highly trained martial artist might be going a bit far. I mean, he definitely has his black dungarees and Cooper stomping, but he's no professional. Let's see how much trouble Mario would get into if he tried to punch through bricks using his admittedly quite flawed technique. Looking at Mario's technique for breaking bricks, he's jumping, which means that nothing is going to be taking the impact but his arm. He hits the blow with a bent elbow, meaning that at least the force will be spread at least a bit throughout the body. And finally, Mario is punching with his whole fist, which means that the force is being spread out over a larger surface area, and the resultant force will also be felt along that larger surface area. This last one is key as to why Mario's come out of each punch with at least some damage. A skilled martial artist would put all of their force into their index and middle knuckles, greatly reducing the surface area when striking the wall. This means that a third of the force would be required. But what would happen if Mario tries to break bricks with his technique? Well, best case scenario, Mario would likely break a couple of fingers, despite his exceedingly padded gloves. Given that Mario is absolutely decimating those bricks and turning them into a fine powder, he's definitely producing the required force and directing it into those bricks. But as Newton tells us, an equal and opposing force will be pushed into Mario's arm. And given the number of Newtons we're working with, I'd be surprised if Mario didn't end up with some kind of fracture going up his forearm. A study from 2018 looked into the biochemical properties in human male bones, subject to bending and compressive loads. To find out the amount of force required for these bones to bend and break to the point that they are no longer usable. In this study, it was found that forces as low as 8,000 newtons would cause a male human ulna and radius to fail, almost half of the 20 kilonewtons required to damage the humerus. But given that we're requiring over 60,000 newtons to punch down that wall, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Mario's definitely going to end up harming himself at some point. So there we go. Surprise, surprise, punching bricks is almost the best way to break your hand outside of a baseball bat and a dare. But either way, it's surprising that Mario can produce enough strength to break through those thick stacks of bricks. But this is far from the last time I'll be taking a look at those Super Mario Brothers. 
I've still got videos planned for a wide range of Mario topics, from bob -omb explosives to the strength of Cooper shells. If you want to see me cover more of the science behind some Mario mechanics, then tell me your favourite aspects of the Mario universe in the comments down below. Best comments will appear at the end of the next video. If you'd rather see me cover another Mario power-up, then take a look at the video here, where I take a look at the science behind the fire flower. Or, if you want to see me cover the science behind Mario's powerful princess, then take a look at the video here, where I cover Peach's iconic float. Either way, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel, so I can keep investigating the science behind your favourite game shows and more.